Hello, let's go. This is BCN. It's time for trivia, for trivia. Oh, with Bob Carroll, it's time for trivia with Bob. With Bob. Yeah, but Trivia maniacs, Ed Gardner's back in town, ladies and gentlemen. Hope he fixed his window. That's why we, he wasn't here yesterday. Uh, your fish taco needs a little help, Rich. <laughs> I think it was fine. It was fine with me, and it's fine with you. That's right. We talk about yesterday's show, and yesterday Ed Gardner was not with us, and uh, we, we felt bad that he wasn't here. Uh, but Rich is here. That's good. Uh, who else is here? Did you try the recipe? You got to try the recipe. Mm -mm. You know, put those gummy fish. They have gummy fish. I found Swedish fish. If you put the Swedish fish in the taco, mmm, then you got something. Yes. All right. Try it with Swedish fish. You don't even get them in Sweden, and or in the little boxes that they sell at the grocery store. You don't even have to. They they're pretty fresh. There you go. Welcome to the show, uh, both of you. <laughs> All right. I'll get a few things out of the way. I was just going to wait for a couple more people to show up, but welcome to the show. It's uh, show 164 today. It's crazy, isn't it? Time flies when you're having fun. Oh. No. 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 <laughs> no. no, it isn't. You're saying uh, we're still staying where we have to be. Unbelievable. So here we are. Here we are. Background. Very beautiful Las Vegas. It is. You don't see anybody walking around, but you see a lot of cars go by me. All right, wait, what do you got, three people? Now, I just wanted to say, I, I want to say a, a couple things. One is, if you're paying attention, thank you, thank you, Rich. It's a nice background. Um, Joe, uh, Joe usually comes in, Mr. Trivia Maniac, will not be here. I don't know how long he's going to be out, but he is having surgery, and uh, he, we hope we give him the, our prayers. Hope he gets back really soon. He texted me and said he wouldn't be in for a while because he's having an operation. So we wish him a speedy recovery and we hope he gets back on his feet really soon, really soon. So that's one of the things I wanted to say. And the other thing I wanted to say, uh, my son's show <laughs> is not canceled. They don't like the name of the show. This is what Netflix, Netflix, the executives in their, they've been advertising this show. They had a trailer for the show. They're just going to change the name of the show. Like that's going to make a big deal on Netflix. You know, I mean, there's a million things on Netflix. Keep it. I've been advertising. They probably saw me advertising it and said, wait a minute. <laughs> so we're going to have, uh, Netflix is going to be doing it in a couple weeks. Soon as the executives come up with the right name for it. Uh, ish, ish country. Ish, ish, ishman country. I don't know what it's going to be. And many good wishes to Joe. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. We appreciate it. Just thank Tom Gentile. Gives you the best wishes. He might show up, uh, or he might just watch it in reruns. I don't know how he's going to be doing that. But and we just give give him the best because he's always in here. He's been here forever, and we're, we don't want to we don't want uh, him not to come in anymore. So we hope that he gets well really really soon. 
So uh, it's it's it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So welcome to the show, everybody, and uh, free country. Now there's a good name, John. Country free, free country, country star, country plush. <laughs> I don't know. It's something. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Hands on your buzzards, and uh, let's get on with this little rinky dink show today. And uh, that is crazy. That is, it is crazy, but it'll be back on. Don't call it Ishtar. That's right. Don't. Don't. Whatever you do. <laughs> exactly. All right. Don't call. And hopefully today they won't kick me off again like yesterday. They in the middle of it they kicked me off towards the end, and it comes back on within thirty seconds. But country BS would be another one. All right. So here's the first question. What was Beaver Cleaver's first name? What was Beaver Cleaver's first name? Come up with the right answer. I hope so. All right. Hey. <sighs> Ed, did you like my skit, the Gaslight Village skit that I did uh, with uh, me and myself and I? <laughs> I thought it was very really good. It was hard to do. Uh, I only taped it like twice, and it, it came out okay. You know. Messed up the last joke, but that's okay. I wasn't going to do it again. All right, what do we got? Tom Gentile. Good. I don't know why I forgot Tom was coming in today. I thought he had something else he was doing. It doesn't matter. He's on the list. People come, people go. All right. Tommy Moore says, nice backdrop. Oh, thank you, Tommy Moore. Thank you, Tommy. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in today. Mr. Las Vegas himself. All right. Ed Gardner. There you go. You okay, Ed? Did you fix the window? Did the window get fixed? If, uh, if you weren't here, Ed's got a baseball thrown through his window. Maybe he was singing. <laughs> All right. We're Terry Morgan and uh, Stephen. No, that was that was Wally. S Steve Banning. All right. Did I put your name down? Oh, you're moved up. Stephen, you've been moved up to number nine today on the list. Gary Levinson. And, of course, uh, not Simon or Theodore or Alvin. It was Theodore. That was right. It was Theodore, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, moms and dads, Dan and Patty. Is Dan and Patty here yet? What is wrong? They were out the other day. They come, they go. They're <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, it's crazy. Got to go. Carry on. Stephen Banning came and he left. All right, thanks, Stephen. All right. Just put his name in, and now he's gone. All right, what do you? Uh, I got to do the credits, and without his name in it. All right, well you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. Got to go. <laughs> hey, I don't know if anybody's going to get this, but who was the first jockey to ride more than seven thousand winners? Seven thousand winners. The first jockey to ever ride seven thousand winners. That's horse races. <laughs> Maybe you can come up with the answer. Maybe you can't, but I hope you can. All right. First jockey. I, I know this jockey. I remember him when I was a youngster. And I don't know how long ago that was. <laughs> but it was a long time, that's for sure. All right. All right. First jockey. All right. Okay. What do we got here? All right, let's get rid of that. There we go. <laughs> I just wanted to see how long I could last. With that in the background. There you go. It's okay. All right. Oh, look at this. Clinton Combs just showed up. I'm going to put you now at number nine, Clinton. You moved up because Stephen Banning decided from Peoria. And I'm even going to give you one of his points. <laughs> okay. Joe Gofast. <laughs> Joe Gofast. That's a good name. Bob Carroll. Bob Carroll has a job. I was a jockey once. <laughs> came in last, though. In the th I came. I started in the first race. I came in last in the fourth race. That's how slow I was. Uh, <laughs> that's how slow I was, Jonas. Jonas. Is, yes, I put you down already. Good, Jonas. As some little guy. Hey, 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 Ed. Hey. <laughs> Jose Jimenez. My name, Jose Jimenez. I can't do that. I'm sorry. It was Bill Dana. It was it was funny in its day, <laughs> but not now. I get it. All right. But I used to do his impression. I used to do my impression of uh, 
Bill Dana doing Jose Jimenez. In fact, I had a whole comedy act when I was a kid. I would do that. I would go to uh, Elks Clubs and Moose Lodges. I had a straight man and everything. I must have been 9, 10, 11 years old. And I was doing Jose Jimenez albums, writing down the scripts. <laughs> but hey, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And so I, one of the things, he was in a space suit. So I turned, I had a silver winter jacket. I turned it inside out, zipped it up in the back, and I had a big percolator <laughs> that I found as the crash helmet. Things you do when you're a kid. Unbelievable. What was, what was the answer? Willie Shoemaker. Willie Shoemaker was the answer. Unbelievable. There goes those questions down the tubes. Thank you very much for coming in today. I appreciate, appreciate each and every one of you. I certainly do. All right. We'll be back. It could be. We could. Hey, our show today brought to you by MagicTricks.com. MagicTricks.com by the best magic tricks in the entire world. Don't forget to stop in and see Jackie and Pete Monica with MagicTricks.com. Got a new sponsor for this show. If you have children, you have little babies, you like to help them out, here's something nice. It's Gerber mm -mm, New Beefy Five Layer Burrito. Oh, man. I don't think I want to wait to see what comes out on the other side. But <laughs> it's by Gerber. Run this history into it into the ground. All right, the first U.S. presidential election ended on January 10th, 1789, in and resulting in George Washington being the first president of the United States. Who was his vice president of the United States? He had a vice president. Uh, was it James Wilkinson, Thomas Jefferson? John Adams or Alexander Hamilton, who was the vice president under George Washington. All right, see if you can get this one right. It's right here on the RLBCN network. <laughs> all right, there we go. I looked all over for uh, something for the background, so I found that Las Vegas thing, and it's on a loop. It just goes over and over again, so... After a while, it could drive people crazy because the lights were... It's like going there, all right? It's like going to Vegas. Go turn those lights off, all right? They did for a while. All right, Hamilton. All right, what do we got? Oh. I got to look myself. All right. Clinton Combs got an answer, did he? No. Ter Terry. All right. All right. And Ed, Ed Gardner, hope your window is fine, Ed. You know, I hope you're enjoying your life. You're Mr. Magic out there in Danvers area. We got everybody? I think so. Whoa, it's a big one. It's John Adams. John Adams. Hey, you know what we're going to do today? Uh, if we got some time? Uh, you know how Owens Magic is going out of business. It's been in business forever. Same with the Lord & Taylor. Lord & Taylor department stores, they've been in business for 117 years, going out of business. A lot of places going out of business. We feel bad for anyone who's losing their job, but it, this shouldn't have had to happen with all these places. Uh, Penny's is closing stores, Sears, Kmart's practically gone. It's crazy. So uh, we're, we're going to go uh, to Gons, uh, John Gons Museum of Magic today. Uh, I'll have a little video. I'm going to show you what's the inside of his museum looks like and everything. That's coming up today on the show, so that's exciting. Uh, all right, so John Adams went on and became the second president of the United States in 1797. The largest heist in the history of the United States at the time, uh, which company's building was successfully robbed of $1.2 million in cash and about $1.5 million in other securities? checks, bonds, money orders, etc. in January of 1950, the largest robbery heist in the history of the United States 
at that time. Was it Dunbar, Brinks, Loomis, or Bank of America? Which was that heist in January of 1950? Uh, there you go. All right, there you go. Oh, we got answers now. The guys are <laughs> the Bellagio. <laughs> No, Jonas, 1950. I don't think the Bellagio was there in 1950. It could have been, but I don't think so. All right. All right. Jack Benny's, Jack, Jack Benny's vault. Rochester. Rochester. All right. And Terry Morgan, there you go. All right, we got everybody. I think so. I think everybody got it in there. Good. It was uh, it was Brinks, Brinks Incorporated. All eleven members of the gang responsible for the robbery were eventually caught, but uh, about fifty-eight thousand dollars of the two point seven million was recovered. They must have had a real fun time spending that money. <laughs> but that's that's right. That's pretty good, isn't it? All right, so there you go. That's a, that's a little bit of uh, uh, history, and we got to close up the shop on history. So uh, uh, that's it. That's history. Uh-oh, here we go again. Mind-blowing history. There we go. It's it's mind-blowing history. We we uncovered some great ones. It's not multiple choice, but you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> you're most likely to be stung by a bee if you're eating what kind of fruit? You're most likely to be stung by a bee if you're eating what kind of fruit? All right. So this is really a guess. You know, unless you really know what fruit, then good luck for you. What kind of fruit would you most likely be stung by if you were eating this, stung by a bee? I think it's so... Oh. Once again, they're having trouble playing the video, so I can't watch myself. So I usually try to get 30 seconds so I know what's going on. But Facebook, what are you going to do? All right. I'll do the what I can. Do what I can here to show. All right? Because I like to see how many people are watching. You know? So I can keep track of my lists. Ah! All right? Now, let's see. A juicy apple, an orange, an apple, a watermelon. Most likely to be stung by a bee if you're eating what vegetable? I don't make this stuff up. I find it and research it and... Sometimes I'm right and sometimes I'm wrong. Right, Terry? Terry Morgan knows. <laughs> That's okay. I do the best I can with what they give me. Everybody got an answer? See, now I have to guess. Let's see. Kumquat. <laughs> I don't have a, a noise for the fruit that I'm going to do, but there you go. All right. All right. Did we anybody get it? Strawberry? Eight. We get it? No. Oh, that's sad. All right. Hey, you can't... You, it, it was a banana. You're most likely to be stung by a bee if you're eating a banana. Wow, that's crazy. All right. There have been 523 on this most famous list. There have been 523 people on this most famous list. All right. Which do, list do you think this is? 523 people on this most famous list, all right? It's a question I have to repeat two or three times. Why, I don't know. I think once is enough, all right? I don't know. Let's see what we got here, all right? All right. Most famous list, all right? All right. What do we got? 
Anything? Five hundred and twenty-three people were on this famous list. Ah, uh, well, uh, that's uh, pretty good. <laughs> Forbes five hundred. See, there's a list. Very good. Coming up with a list. Five hundred and twenty-three people were on this famous list. It's uh, it's not so bad the weather-wise here. Of course, we're still smoky, and we're still ex-wives. There we go. There. Johnny Carson, Johnny Carson's ex-wives. Uh, uh, what a list that is. Uh, bombastic, bombastic Bushkin, my attorney. My attorney wrote a book about me. Uh, <laughs> we got everybody's answers. I think it was. It was most wanted. The most wanted list. America's most wanted. Oh, Terry got it. Let me get, make sure I give him a point there. Very good. America's most wanted list. 523 on that famous list. And and, and growing. All right. Uh, in what state did the first Kentucky Fried Chicken open in 1952? In what state did Kentucky Fried Chicken open in 1952? <laughs> the state of constipation. <laughs> Clinton Black book. <laughs> All right, what do you got? Anything? The McCarthy files. <laughs> Senator McCarthy. You want to be on that list? No, I didn't want. Lucy was. Lucy was. On, Charlie Chaplin was on that list. People. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. What state started Kentucky Fried Chicken? Uh, 1952. I know McDonald's first one's right in San Bernardino. They still got it standing today. It is. See, there are 50 states, so I, I should have given you multiple choice for this one. But that's okay. I'm too lazy to write them down. <laughs> it's fine with me. There you go. I can put some makeup on. I get a shiny forehead from this light here. If I stand back, I'm a little better. Right, just sit back and relax. Got it? Everybody? No? All right. What are you going to do? It was uh, Utah. Utah was the right answer. 1952. Utah. See, I wish they played my video again. Then I know how many people in there. I'm thinking there's eight, but that's okay. All right. Hey, what president had two beagles named after him? <laughs> no. Oh, named after. Uh, what? Let me do this again. I'll be right back. What president had two pet beagles named him and her? There you go. That's that's what I wanted to say. What president had two pet beagles named him and her? There you go. What president had two beagles named him and her? That's crazy. All right. See if you come up with it. I hope you can. It would be great if you did. All right. Here we go. Let's try it. All right. All right. We got concentration coming up next, right after this. Stick around. I was working like crazy. I made seven new ones today. All right. Tom Gentile. Oh, he's back. <laughs> there you go. What do you got? There you go. All right. George W. Oh. We thank you for coming in each and every day. You make the show, make it, uh, I especially like your answers, because Debbie, Debbie and I watch it during dinner hour, because I don't get to watch everybody's answers, so it's, it's a pleasure to watch everybody come up with their funny comments. All right, we got it? I think so. I think, oh, Ed? There we go. All right, good. Got it? You got it, everybody. It's, uh, it was... Uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, that's right. Lyndon Baines Johnson was the right answer. And there you go, that's a little bit of mind-blowing trivia right here on the BCN Network. Well, we did a, we did a lot of stuff today. So far, it's only uh, two, uh, 223, so that, that's kind of crazy. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, 
that we were able to uh, be with you guys every single day because some of the things I wanted to do, we don't get to every day. So I'm, I'm glad that we're... What? Door? Okay, hold on. Hello, come in. Oh, I can tell you are on the air right now. I'm on Hi, the air. Bob. How are you today? Very good, oh, thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Listen, what? I just wanted to say, to stop over and say, that I never miss your show. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Yeah. Cavendish. Well, I never watch it, so I never miss it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I really want to say what? that I really love that shirt you're wearing. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. I didn't even know that the Goodwill carried your size. <laughs> oh, that's awful. You know, I was just on the highway coming really? over here, the 405, and, 405? and there was a terrible accident. Accident? Really? No. Nobody got hurt, though. Oh, that's good. Yeah. But 2,000 pounds of hair, human hair, human hair. fell off a truck. Wow. Crazy. Police are still combing the area. All right. Police that's... are still combing the area. Combing the area, I get that's it. That's a good okay, one. <laughs> oh, well. That's Listen, awesome. I got to go, but I appreciate you letting me come on your show. No problem. Anytime. Well, yeah, well, I'm going on a trip. You're going on a trip? Yeah. Where are you going? I'm going uh, on an airplane, and okay. I got to get there pretty soon. Why? Oh, I'm going to... Uh, I didn't ever told you, but I was a, once a locksmith. Locksmith? Yeah. How long? That's what I did for a living. 25 years. 25 years? So I'm years. going to a locksmith convention oh, right good. now. Really? Where is it located? Where is the locksmith convention? Yes. The Florida Keys. Oh, <laughs> come on. I'll see you. Bye, everybody. The Florida Keys. The f <laughs> That's funny. Get out of it. The Florida Keys, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Sorry, I, sometimes I never hear these myself until it's showtime. It's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> uh, thank you, Jonas. Now, if you haven't played this game, uh, where you been? It's concentration. I've come up with uh, a couple of good ones, okay? We're going to give you 60 seconds on the clock. Let me see what I got for uh, some 60-second music. There we go. There we go. 60-second music on the clock. Here we go. Go. All right. See what you can come up with. I'll be right here when you get done. Yeah, I'll have another beer. <laughs> I know Joe loved these. I'm be glad that when he comes back, cause he was good at these. Him and Terry Morgan are fantastic. Everybody's good. Dan and Patty love these too. Crazy. <laughs> Gary Levinson. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. Anybody else got an answer? All right. All right. It's hard not to look at somebody else's answer when you're trying to make up your own. But there you go. If you get close, I'll give it to you anyway. There you go. Got it? All right, there you go. It's uh, We got everybody? I can't beer the blonde 10. No, 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 that's not it. No. 
Uh, I think, did Rich give an answer? I, or maybe Rich is, he's probably cooking. He's getting ready for the next kitchen segment. It was, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it was Wink, and there's a Mart, and a 10, and an Ale. Wink, Mart, 10, Ale. Wink, Martindale is how it comes out. Uh, crazy, isn't it? Unbelievable. All right, well, we got more. Let's see what I can come up with for the next little thing. Here we go. 60 seconds on the clock. I think I married that girl. <laughs> Michael Mirth. Here we go. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, this is a good one. Oh, man. Dan and Patty would have loved this one. All right. I have nightmares about this show. This especially. All right. Wow. Got a slow connection today, aren't we? People are looking it up. I know, I know, Michael. It's a sad state of affairs. It was, I know. What's up is up, and what's down is down. <laughs> Ed Gardner. I wish I had snow out here. Wish it was snow. Wish it was snow every day. There you go. All right, what do, what do we got here? It's a shell, and there's a little E there, and uh, two winters, and there's an S in the snowman, so that means winters. I'm gonna I'm hiding the letters in the show. All right, and Michael Wald, ladies and gentlemen. The Wald man just showed up. Michael Mirth, Michael Wald. They're all her, here, here, and there. <laughs> Isn't this nice? It's nice to be with you each and every day, as a matter of fact. All right, we're going to take a, just two minutes to, uh, to we made a long time ago. I went with Dan and Rich, and uh, Dan got us uh, tickets, not tickets, just uh, an invitation to go see John Gowan's mu mu uh, museum. It's right around the corner from us, about uh, maybe two or three miles. Uh, you never even know it was there. It's uh, magic uh, where he builds all the illusions for David Copperfield, Doug Henning, uh, top performers from all over the world, but he also has a magic museum there. We loved it, so here's a little uh, visit.
have it. Pretty nice, wasn't it? Oh, that was a sweet place. Great place, very nice. I have to ask Rich. I think it was from the silent movie. If not, it was a reproduction of one. That uh, and that mannequin that was uh, Houdini sitting at a desk. He's actually an automat automaton, and uh, he actually does an autograph of Harry Houdini on a piece of paper. And they gave us one. They gave one to Dan and Rich and myself, and it was really fun. And that dummy that I had originally probably cost like three hundred dollars. It had so many, so many switches inside. It's a, a dummy from the. Elroy Brothers. They only created like 32 or 35 of them, and uh, they are expensive today. Probably about ten, twenty thousand dollars for that dummy. Uh, I, I, I was so happy when he let me touch it because that's a, a rare piece of uh, history right there. But anyway, it's TV trivia time, so let's get on with the little show because that's why we're here. <laughs> I can't remember either. All right, it was a it was a great time, wonderful time there. Glad he let us come in. Which of the following TV shows aired for the most seasons? 24, House, Lost, or Breaking Bad? Which of the following TV shows aired for the most seasons? 24, House, Lost, or Breaking Bad? Let's see if you can come up with the right answer. All right. He's, he's, he's an Ottoman. That's right. Seriously, it is interesting. I mean, I mean, we could have spent hours in there, but you know, it's a place of business where they make illusions. So you know, we only stayed there like an hour or so. Sorry that Dan and Patty missed that. Eh, I'll play it again some other day when I'm bored. <laughs> All right, what do we got? Tony Borders. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Borders came in. I gave Darcy a point for just showing up too. All right. Ed Gardner, all right, Gary says house, Ed Gardner says 24, Tony says 24, Tom Gentile says Breaking Bad, that was a good series, I'm going to watch it backwards, I'm going to watch it backwards, so he becomes a nice person at the end, <laughs> Brick House, all right, and Terry Morgan, got everybody's answer, I think so, it's only a multiple choice. We got everybody. This time it's flying today. It really is. I think that was three minutes. Sorry, I thought it was two minutes, but it was three minutes. It was very interesting to see all that old stuff. All that magic in there? Unbelievable. He goes back to the days of Mark Wilson when he had Magic Land of Alakazam. Uh, a very nice man, indeed. And a uh, very good, very nice uh, museum. It was 24, and it ran for nine seasons from 2001 to 2014. Uh, yes, I love that 24 series. You, I, we're going to watch it again just for the body count. <laughs> how, many, how many people passed passed by away during that series? It had to be unbelievable. Uh, we're like, uh oh, there's a commercial. Uh, six people died. All right, well, yeah, here you go. Just, uh, I'll do that and then put it on trivia. <laughs> Start watching 24 from the beginning. All right. Ooh. Oh, here's a question. Found guilty of criminal indifference. Has anybody ever got criminal indifference? Found guilty of criminal indifference. How long is the sentence that is handed out for Jerry Seinfeld and his friends in the final episode of Seinfeld? This is a trivia question. Was it one year, five years, 60 days, or two years less a day? One year, five years, 60 days, or two years less a day? Let's see if you come up with this right answer. I hope you can. Here we go. Okay. 
criminal indifference. <laughs> That's like, has anybody ever been arrested for duplicating a VHS tape? I don't think they're honest for that now, but... All right, what do we got? All right. <laughs> Copying a VHS tape. Copying a cassette tape anymore. Anybody going to jail for that? All right. Here you go. FBI's right on the case. All right. Michael Wall, Tony Borders, Terry Morgan. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Where do I get all this stuff? It's crazy, isn't it? They didn't care. They didn't care. Criminal indifference. They didn't care. Damn. That's why we're watching this other show that's on Netflix. It's it's pretty risque, but it's a good show. It's uh, And I really didn't realize that uh, Matt LeBlanc could actually act. But he yeah, and he's a real good actor in this show. Uh, episodes. We got everybody's answer? I think so. It was uh, criminal indifference. Yeah. I don't know. Well, <laughs> it was one year. One year. They got one year in jail. That's the final episode. Ran for nine seasons from July 5th, 1989 to May 14th, 98. Yep. Almost didn't stay on the air because people go, well, what is this show? But then people started watching it and really liked it. All right. Well, what is Marge Simpson's maiden name? Uh-oh. Marge Simpson's maiden name. Franklin, Thompson, Davis, or Bouvier? All right. Marge Simpson's middle name. Yahoo! Yes, Matt LeBlanc is a very good actor, and especially on this show, Episodes. Very risque, but uh, it's he's, he's such a bad character in this show, but you can't help but like him. But talk about... An eagle maniac. Oh my gosh, it's it, unbelievable. But I'm glad he agreed to do that show. Oh, Donald Nielsen's here, ladies and gentlemen. All right, well, Donald, I'll put you down, but you're not going to stay, are you? All right, I'll give you a point. Donald might get a point today. All right, thank you for coming in. Who else is here? All right, Tony Borders. All right. <laughs> Pobalicious, Michael Mirth, uh, <laughs> Ed Gardner. Michael's just here to watch me smile and laugh. I know it. And Jonas, there you go. There you go. Mm. Darcy. Hey, good answer, Darcy. Good answer. Is it the right one? We'll find out in a minute. Boy, I should have made the show longer because look at this. People are packing in the last 15 minutes. All right. Gary? Oh, uh, geez. Terry Morgan, large, large Marge. We got it? Yeah, it's uh, Bouvier. Bouvier. I'm glad that's what her middle name was. Okay. All right. I don't even know the name of this. I'm not going to do that. I don't know this. I don't know that. Uh, uh, do we do we got time for one more? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> oh, we got time for uh, one more? No, 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 no. That's TV trivia. Because I have to watch the clock, because that's my job. All right, here's an ad. Who's in this ad? Frosted Flakes. Frosted Flakes. Well, anyway, you hold your spoon right. You'll get more plus, uh, frosted flakes in your mouth. Okay? Okay. Observe. He who imparts knowledge often gains some. Case in point. Meticulous father utilizing Kellogg's sugar frosted flakes purely as a teaching aid. In so doing, he discovers that these large, crisp flakes of corn with their special toasted-in sugar frosting are a great way to sweeten up the day. Such instruction is necessary. Otherwise, some parents might never know the pleasure or the proper method of eating Kellogg's sugar frosted flakes. <clears throat> frosted flakes. There you go. All right, so you got some time? You got anything to do? Probably not, but <laughs> maybe you should. 
All right, let me just hit that on there. There we go. There we go. All right, who was that guy in that commercial? Not the kid, the guy. All right. Who, who did that commercial? Come on, he was a young guy at one time, wasn't he? Well, everybody is. All right, who was the guy in that commercial? All right. No, Paul Freeze. I'm not asking for the narrator. All right. Paul, who was the guy in the glasses? All right, now you guys are just making fun of me because it's a show. This is a professional show. Now that I see it on a big screen, it's professional. <laughs> That's Tony Borders. He knows these things. All right. <sighs> Sean Connery. No, it's not Sean Connery, Jonas, Jonas, Jonas. All right, yeah, Donald, Donald got it. Donald got it. Thank you, Donald. All right, come in and come at the beginning of the show. Maybe you win tomorrow's Friday. Today's Blur's Day, TGI Friday. And then I got two days off to come up with more stuff. All right, my crack research people here. <laughs> not really. All right, Mrs. Cavendish will probably be back next week. Yeah, will that be fun? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. All right. We got everybody? All right, that's enough. That's enough. I, I don't know who's watching this show. It was Adam West. Adam West. Na 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 Batman. It was. It was Batman. It was in his younger days. It's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. We got time to do one question? Do it. <laughs> Hey, this and that. We'll do some this and that real quick. Uh, Adam West was almost James Bond. Yes, and I was too. I was almost. That doesn't count. All right, Donald got it. I'll give it to him. He's only got three points. You can't save him for another day. Once they're once the show's over, those points are flown right. They're right down in the window. But okay, here we go. Which Spanish city is also the name of a well-known type of orange? Is it Seville? Madrid, Barcelona, or Valencia. All right. Uh, which Spanish city is also the name of a well-known type of orange? Seville, Madrid, Barcelona, or Valencia. Go. All right. This time is flying by. That's I know, Donald, we can't save our points. You can put them in a jar if you want. Maybe you'll get something, but... They're only good for the show, and that's it. But you know what? You never know. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. All right. All right. It's a well-known type of orange. Boy, I hope this answer's right, because I don't want Terry Morgan to get on my case. <laughs> I look these things up, and I look and research, and then sometimes I double research them, going, that can't be right. A well-known type of orange. Are they Valencia orange? I don't think so. Uh, it's a Spanish city. Got it? All right, somebody does. There you go. Now, if you get a gift code, and if you don't want to use it, you can pass the savings on to another professional or amateur magician, or maybe get a, get a, give a gift to a kid, and maybe they can learn to be a magician. Because that's what we need now. More virtual magicians. Zoom! <laughs> Day-old points. It's like day-old bread. It's useless. It's like a screen door on a submarine. That's right. Useless. It's like a Republican National Convention. It, what? It's, never mind. I got them all. There you go. It was, uh, it was uh, Seville. The Barber of Seville. The Seville orange is often used to make marmalade. Wow. Hey, all during, uh, all airing during the 1970s, which of the following TV sitcoms made its debut first? Which one was the first one on the television in the 70s? Happy Days, Good Times, Welcome Back, Cotter, or The Mary Tyler Moore Show? See if you can come up with it. All right? Let's see what you got here. All right? All right? All right, let's see what you got. All right. 
see what you got here. Have you got any? I think you can come up with it. All right. Here we go. Let's see what you got. Uh oh. Sorry. It's Dale McKenzie's music. He's not here. Is he? It's okay. All right. Oh! Donald. Let's see what we got here. All right. All right. All right. What do we got? Anything? All right. Who's next? Who's on the? Who's on the list? Anybody? What show was on first? Uh, was it uh, Happy Days, Good Times, Welcome Back, Cotter, or Mary Tyler Moore show? Let's see. All right. I'm gonna put that music over here because I like it. All right. Madrid. What? <laughs> Welcome back, Cotter. Uh, got it? Oh, Michael Wald. There we go. I gotta add up these points today. If you won in the last couple of days, of course, we pass the savings on to the next person. You never know what's gonna happen here. Who's on second? What's on first? Rich Gilbert. There we go. Who won last time? Oh, Dan and Patty. Uh, they were the nature student. Robert Hale. And uh, Rich and Jonas and Joe won in the last week or so. Thank you very much, Darcy. You like the background? We got more. You want to see this one? That's one. Here we go. That's how about this one. There we go. My own backyard. Or my front yard. Yeah. Vegas. There we go. Vegas. All right. What do we got? We got anything? It was Mary Tyler Moore, ladies and gentlemen. Mary Tyler Moore was absolutely right. Hey, did you have fun today? I had a great time. I always have a good time. Give yourself a round of applause. I gotta cross this off the list. Donald, Donald, ladies and gentlemen, is here. Give him a round of applause. I don't, I don't, I don't remember where he's from. I've seen him in here before, but I don't know exactly where he's from. But I'm sure he's a wonderful human being, like we all are in this. In this day and age, uh, day and age. Hey, you know what it's time for? Uh, it's time. It's time for me to do something. Hey, hey, wait a minute. We are unwrapping the greatest gift you will ever give to mom, dad, even the kids. It's the Ronco bottle and jar cutter, an exciting new way to recycle throwaway bottles and jars into decorative glassware, centerpieces, thousands of things. Emery cloth is included to make glasses drinking smooth. A hobby for dad, craft for the kids, or great gift for mom. The Ronco bottle and jar cutter, still only seven seventy-seven. Oh, is that, that's amazing. All right, well, there you go, seven seventy-seven. It's time now for... What the heck? Oh, what the heck. Let's go on and see what's going on here. Oh, this is a Walmart. This is a Walmart. The guy couldn't get himself a mask, so he uses a piece of toilet paper, <laughs> which he probably fought, found down in the... The toilet paper aisle, and just put that on his. I think he's got like a tape on it, holding it in place. I think that that's that's what people are think about this coronavirus. Uh, uh, please mask it up, ladies and gentlemen. Mask it up, and you know what? It's always good to find a human being that helps other people. Our next, what the heck, is exactly that. Congratulations, George Brownage, for pleasing fifteen women for an entire day. We are all exhausted and very satisfied and we look forward to next year. We all thank you. Good for you, George Brownridge. <laughs> We're all exhausted and very satisfied. And back to Walmart again we go. And management once again has put, <laughs> put out a notice for our, our favorite guy, uh, Shane, what's going on with Shane? Stop putting on multiple name tags and pretending to have a personality disorder. <laughs> the management, oh what my the God. Heck? Another lucky winner. Thank you. 
Join Bob Carroll next time for more trivia on Facebook. Everybody have a good time? I know I did. You know what we're going to do today? It doesn't matter about the points. The points don't matter. Uh, you know, we're all in the same boat out here, but some people are worse off than others. And we want to help everybody we possibly can. So today we're going to give our gift code to, uh, to Donald. Give him a round of applause. I know what he's going through because we're out here in California and uh, anytime we could evacuate too. So uh, we give him the gift code from magictricks.com, $5 gift code. It's not a big deal. It's just points, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we thank you. Make sure you mask it up. Who was here today? Well, uh, Rich and Ed and Terry and Gary and uh, Jonas was here. Thank you, Jonas, for coming in. Tom Gentile, Michael Mirth, uh, yes, Michael Wald was here. Darcy, my wonderful sister, Darcy. Miss you, Darcy. Hope we get to see you soon. Uh, Tony Borders and, uh, and Donald was here. Give yourself a round of applause. It was wonderful, you know. Each day is a gift. That's everybody's on this list. So we're going to give uh, Donald a, a nice uh, gift card, gift code to magictricks.com. Well, it's been wonderful to see you. Hope you had a good time. I know I did. Is that the end of the show? Yes, it is. Hard to believe, isn't it? It is. Uh, we had a great time today. And so, my friends, it's nice to be important but it's more important to be nice. It is. It we, we, it we, 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 we is. Thank you for coming in. It's, uh, it's a big city. Wouldn't want to paint it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Until next time, i got to turn my chair like this so I can get out of the picture, so I can get out of the chair quick. We thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. Mask it up. Social distance. Stay, stay sharp. Watch out for the other guy. Buckle up. Look both ways when you cross the street. I gotta go. Bye-bye. see you again soon. Hope tomorrow. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Get them in here too. Bye-bye. <laughs>